Welcome to Self Care for Geeks. I am going to present. So let me just get this up here. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Not this one. Okay, everyone see that all right? Okay, awesome. Okay, welcome to Self Care for Geeks. So in this workshop, uh, we're going to discuss what self-care really is, why it's important, and break through the most common excuses for not practicing self-care. We'll also brainstorm self-care ideas and create personalized self-care plans in order to turn our ideas into action. So the goal of this workshop is to expand the general understanding of what self-care is and to make it more practical in an everyday way. So um, I was gonna say, make sure you have your mics off and everything, but it looks like we're sounding pretty good here. So um, I do wanna make this an interactive workshop. So there might be times where I ask uh, or pose a question. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can type it out in the chat box. Uh, and we'll try and catch it that way. I have a lot of things on my screen, so I may not catch it right away, but I will take a look if I ask a question. Um, there will be some time for questions at the very end of the presentation as well. Uh, but again, if you have, some, have a question you wanna ask right away, or if you want some clarification on something, again, feel free to unmute yourself or ask in the chat box. I also wanna mention you may wanna have some paper and pen on hand for later when we create our self-care plans, or you can go paperless, you can open a Google Doc, uh, Word Doc, whatever works for you. All right, okay, so looks like we're good to get started here. Um, all right, so the very first thing I wanna make clear to you is that you already have what you need to be an awesome self-care practitioner. So you can breathe easy, just breathe. You don't need anything fancy or to go buy anything expensive. You have what you need already for self-care. So before we dive too much into the content, I want to introduce myself. So hello, my name is Vanessa. I am from Canada. So I was born and raised in the greater Vancouver area and I might also be in a different time zone than you. So right now it's still the morning, it's a little bit after 10 a.m. I also wanna let you know that I am super passionate about helping people enhance their self-esteem, confidence, and capabilities, especially for girls and young women. So I currently work for two nonprofit organizations as a coordinator of youth programs. And most importantly, I want to share with you that I am a proud geek. So as mentioned in the workshop description, I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Wonder Woman, Parks and Recreation. Uh, I'm also a huge Star Wars fan. I love all the Marvel movies. And, you know, I'm, I'm still recovering for, from that uh, ending of Game of Thrones on TV. It's just, it was a lot to deal with. So still recovering there. And that's why I'm so excited to be partnering up with she superheroines etc uh, so i can not only do this workshop but be my true geeky self while i'm at it so this is great and don't worry if you're here uh, and you don't identify as a geek that's totally fine we accept and appreciate you plus i'm sure everyone's got their own fandom that they can really geek out about okay so that's a little bit about me and who i am Next, I wanna speak a little bit about my workshop philosophy. So my philosophy or my motto is stay true. Behind this is the idea that you are enough as you are and you have worth. So what we're going over today is not a prescription. It's not about you know, changing who you are at your core, but rather about supporting your own unique growth and development. You know yourself best and you know what works for you. So you do you, okay? I encourage you to integrate the tools and information that will best fit with your life and your personality. And while I also want to encourage everyone to be curious, and to be open to new ideas and activities, we should also keep in mind that what works for one person may not work for another, uh, and that's okay. 
You'll also notice this theme when we go through some of the activities today. So I'm gonna be very open about how you do things and that's because there's no one correct way to do things. The best way is always gonna be the way that works best for you. And I, and I wanna give an example of this. So um, the example that I can give is from the bullet journaling that she, Superheroes, et cetera, put on a little while back. So I was a participant in that. Uh, also great workshop, by the way, good job. Uh, so I went into the workshop knowing nothing about bullet journaling. And then I came out with this really great basic understanding of how to do it and was very eager to start. So at first I tried to do it exactly as originally intended, like by the book, everything exactly how you're supposed to, right? That's how I start with everything. But as I went along, I noticed that certain things worked out really well for me. And then other things just didn't really jive with how I like to organize things. Right, so ultimately what I use now is a hybrid of what I used to do, plus the new tools that I learned from the workshop that worked really well for me. So this is how I stayed true to myself, by recognizing what works best for me and then integrating that into my life rather than you know, trying to conform to something that just doesn't fit. Okay, so that is the workshop philosophy that I have. Now let's get into self-care. So when I bring up self-care or those two words, self-care, what comes to mind or what images pop into your head? So what do you first think of what comes to your head? Anyone can respond here and there's no wrong answers. It's whatever is true for you. So you can unmute yourself if you want to put it in the chat. Go ahead. Anyone? Okay, if we're a quiet bunch, that's also totally okay. I'm very flexible with this. Uh, oh, I have a message here. Going for a massage. Okay, going for a massage. Yeah, good one. Anyone else want to share? Doing things for yourself like exercise. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. I love it that you can chat too. I run a program for younger girls and the very first day, nobody wanted to speak out loud. So they're just like typing to me in the chat and then I had to read out what they were saying. So funny, but it's okay if we're shy too. Um, and then taking time for myself to enjoy hobbies. Awesome, great. So I feel like we all have some ideas of what self-care is. Uh, doing things that calm your mind. I think it's a crochet. I'm also crochet, super into that, I love it. Awesome. So I think sometimes uh, when you when you think of self care or when people in general think of self care, they get these big ideas, right? So um, maybe this comes to mind, right? So I, I think that these are some of the most common common images that come to mind when you're thinking about self care. So we've got this fancy bubble bath with flowers, uh, wine, candles, everything, everything that you want. We've also got a person doing some yoga on a beautiful beach, uh, and maybe they're at a retreat or something like that. Uh, so what I wanna say is self-care can absolutely incorporate some of these things when you're thinking on a grander or a long-term scale. But what I wanna emphasize is that it's not just these things. So let's broaden our understanding of self-care so it's not only these types of activities. Okay, so let's move into defining what self-care is. All right, here's a standard definition of self-care. In a nutshell, self-care means taking care of oneself, duh, right? So specifically, it's any action or activity that we decide to do in order to look after ourselves, mentally, physically, and emotionally. So while this definition is technically correct, it's kind of dull, right? It lacks color, uniqueness, and depth. And you're like, okay, great, but what do I do with that, right? So what I'd like to share with you is the idea that self-care is an everyday practice. All right, so think of self-care as something that you need to cultivate an awareness of and develop a practice for. So it's paying attention to what you need in each and every moment and thinking about the little things, not just the big things. And we're using the word practice here for a reason, right? So self-care is not like 
just this one line on your to-do list that you check off and you're done self-care for the week. Self-care is continuous. So again, it's not like, okay, well, I had a bubble bath on Sunday, so check, I'm done self-care, I'm good this week. It, it doesn't work like that. Another example I can give is water intake, right? So staying hydrated is important, and I think we can all agree to that. But it doesn't mean I'm going to drink all the water that I need in one week on the Sunday. It's like that, that's just not how things work, right? You have to spread it out. Um, you can also think about close friends and relationships. So they require time and effort in order to maintain them. So you need that time and that effort in order to stay close and keep a strong bond. So your self-care practice requires getting into the habit of checking in with yourself and making choices that contribute to your overall well-being. And remember that it's not just the big things, it's the little things too. It's remembering to eat lunch during a stressful work day. It's getting up and stretching if you've been sitting at a computer for too long. And yes, it can also be a weekend retreat if you have the means to do that, but it's not just those things. Okay, so self-care, why? don't we do this? Why don't we practice self-care? Why, like, when we think of it, like, oh, I should practice self-care more. I need to integrate that into my life more. But why don't we? Why isn't it already a big part of our lives? Um, so again, if anyone feels like sharing, you can unmute or you can type if you want. So what are the things that come up? So time, not having enough time, for sure. Yeah, how many times are it's like, oh, it'd be really great if I could read this book or do whatever. Oh, I don't have the time. Doesn't feel like a priority. Forget to, for sure. Yeah, all of these things. Uh, sometimes we don't make us a priority. Yes, and I will talk about that for sure. And then feeling guilty about it. Yes, absolutely. I relate to all of these things. Um, and it, or I'll do it later. Yeah, putting it off, right? Thinking like, oh, well, I need to prioritize other things that are more important. And we're, we're the last thing on the list. Yes, awesome. Great. Thank you for answering. So, what I wanna do right now is highlight two of the biggest reasons why I think most people don't practice self-care and that I have personally experienced getting in my own way of practicing self-care. All right, so here's the first one. The badge of busy, okay? This sounds like I don't have time or I'm too busy. I also hear this thing that people do where they start comparing how many hours of sleep they got. Like one person was like, oh, you know, I, I had to stay up and work on this or do this other thing or the kids, whatever, right? And they say, I only got five hours of sleep. And the person they're talking to is like, oh, I know, I hear you. And I only got four hours of sleep. So it's like this comparison game of like sleep deprivation, which is, just doesn't make sense to me. It's like they're one upping each other when they get less sleep. So Somehow it's gotten into our heads that being busy and being overburdened with responsibilities is a marker of worth or how well you're doing as a person. And I, like, let me tell you, I completely relate to this. I tend to measure my worth or my value as the number of things that I've accomplished. It's, this is just something that I am personally working on. And, you know, it's the first step is just recognizing it to be like, hmm, I'm doing this thing or I'm getting into this habit where, yeah, I think my, my worth or my value as a person um, is dependent on the accomplishments that I have or what I'm able to check off on my to-do list. This is something that we should break away from because it doesn't look after our well-being. It leads to burnout. Uh, and I will say from the slide, this is a, if you don't know, this is a picture of Leslie Nope from Parks and Recreation. Uh, and I think she is just the poster child of doing everything and doing it perfectly. So what I wanna say to you is you do not need to be Leslie. She is her own special person. You don't need to be her. Okay, reason number two is the non-prioritization of self. So it, this sounds very fancy, but it's not. We take so much time and energy looking after the needs of others that we forget to take care of ourselves. Does this sound familiar to anyone? I'm sure it does. So what I wanna to say to you is, hey, check yourself. If we're constantly giving things up 
or putting everyone else before ourselves that contributes to our overall stress levels uh, and it's a detriment to our health. It leads to burnout, which means you will be of no help to anyone. This impacts relationships and it can foster the feeling of resentment if we feel like we're constantly sacrificing ourselves for others. So if you take care of yourself, and practice self-compassion, then you actually have more energy and bandwidth for other people. This is the classic example that everyone has heard, you know, when you're on an airplane and something happens and the oxygen masks come out, right? What they tell you to do is you're supposed to put your own on before you help another person. And that's because you can't help other people if you can't breathe. And that applies to your life as well. If you can't breathe, you cannot be there for other people. Another way of looking at this is that you can't pour from an empty cup. So think of a cup that's filled with all of your time, your energy, your bandwidth. If there's nothing there, you can't pour from it. So you can't give those things to other people. Um, so the, the image that's on the slide right now, I do want to mention that it's created by someone called Hannah Nies, who I follow on Instagram. She makes these awesome images. Uh, so just like to, to shout out awesome women doing awesome things. So if you want to give to others, you won't be able to do that at your full capacity if you're not doing anything, if you're not doing anything to restore and recover yourself. So you need to fill your cup up before you can pour from it. So the big secret, the big reveal, the self-care is not selfish. And I get why people sometimes think it is, but it's really not in the long run. Self-care is not selfish. Okay, so these two um, reasons that we've, we've come up with, the badge of busy and the non-prioritization of self, this ties into why we should practice self-care. Okay, so we should practice it because we're better able to support and take care of others when we are taking care of ourselves. It's important for good mental health and balance. It combats the exhaustion and stress, which can lead to further health complications. So practicing self-care can improve your mood and reduce anxiety. Great, okay, so let's sum up our newfound mindset on self-care with a meme. Okay, so I had to include our Canadian boy Drake here. Uh, so self-care, does not just mean the big things that nobody has time for. It's not just that, okay? Self-care includes the little things and it's a practice that we can fit into our everyday life. It's about noticing and paying attention to what you need every day. So this is our expanded, more practical view of self-care. Drake has summed it up. And I do wanna mention, I, you know, while I am including our Canadian boy Drake, I have not included any pictures of Justin Bieber. Like nobody, nobody needs that. I'll include Drake, but not Justin. Okay, so next, here we are, we're in. Now what, now what do we do? So we have this idea of self-care now. Um, we have a ben better understanding of what it is, why it's important. We're all on the same page, we're ready to go. Okay, now what, right? What do we do? So let's get into the work now. So what I want everyone to do is brainstorm how each of us can practice self-care and not how anyone can practice self-care, but like how you wanna practice self-care, what works for you. So let's do this brainstorm, okay? So if you don't already, grab a pen, paper, open a Word doc, whatever works for you. So self-care is about knowing yourself. Likely you already know what fills your bucket, what gives you energy, and this self-awareness is key. So spend some time brainstorming for yourself. Uh, you can make a list or a mind map if you're a visual person, whatever works for you. And these can be short-term or long-term things and just write whatever comes to mind. Don't hesitate, just if you have an idea, jot it down. You're the only one that's gonna see it, right? So it's for you. Okay, so while you're doing that, so I'm not just dead silence while we all work on this, um, I'm gonna share with you my own personal brainstormed list of self-care ideas. Okay, so 
The first one I have is reading. Reading is huge to me. I love to read, love, love, love to read. Um, these are some of the books that I like, some series that I like. I uh, love Harry Potter. I will share that I am a Ravenclaw. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so just, I love to read. And Dune is probably my favorite book ever. It has a lot of problems, but it's still my favorite book. Okay, so the next thing I want to share with you is finding inspiration and motivation in things. So my go-tos for that, oh, and someone else likes the name of the wind. Awesome, love it. So yeah, so my go-tos for finding inspiration and motivation uh, includes TED Talks, podcasts, webinars, and workshops. Um, so these two podcasts I am currently listening to and I always feel inspired afterwards. So the first one is called I Way, and it's by Jamila Jamil. And it's awesome. And she's also on Instagram and got and has some videos on there that are amazing as well, including um, an interview with Lizzo, which is great. There's also uh, a podcast called She's So Cool. So I really like this one because it highlights the life stories of amazing women in history or from fiction. So anyone from Maya Angelou uh, to Professor McGonagall. So really cool. All right. The next thing I'm going to share with you is arts and crafts. So I love to be creative and make things. So some of the things that I've made um, include cross stitching. So yeah, there's Luna for sure. <laughs> so there's Luna from Sailor Moon, um, as well as a Beware of the Leopard sign, which is a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, I also like painting. So I'm not really the type of person that can just look at a blank canvas and go for it. I, like, I, I There's just a block there for me. So I prefer to you know, go to the local community center or an art studio and, and take a class for an hour or two where it's just like guided for you. So you put together um, more of a follow along project. Uh, I also have been into crochet. So those are some scarves that I've made. And recently I'm trying to learn how to sew. So that's a scrunchie. That's the only thing I've put together so far. Uh, and in the past I've been into bracelet making. So you'll see some leather wrap bracelets there as well. All right, so I, I kind of went into three things very in depth, but I'm going to share with you the rest of my list. And I'm sharing this with you because I, you know, maybe it'll help you think of things that you haven't thought about, or maybe it'll um, make you think, oh, maybe not this, but that it reminds me of something else that I like to do. But here's the rest of my list. So my golden three, and I did this this morning as well, are coffee, donuts, and a crossword. It's just like so comforting to me. And yeah, we have this great donut shop uh, about a five minute drive from us. I love doing crossword puzzles uh, and just with some coffee with it is amazing. Those are my, my golden three. I also really like spending time in nature. So even if that's you know, just a short walk or sitting outside near some greenery, anything like that is great. Uh, also do some meditation cardio and cardio has been so difficult for me to maintain throughout my life but recently I've been trying to integrate it more into my schedule and it's worked out because I have been working from home so it's a little bit easier to fit into my day-to-day -day. Um, and ex you know any kind of exercise cardio it's great for your mental health as well it gives you those endorphins there's also time with friends and family so uh, spending quality time with them. And usually for me, that's kind of geeky too, because we play board games. Uh, before the pandemic, my family and I were learning how to play D&D, &D, which was pretty cool as well. Um, there's also journaling and coloring. Both of those things I'm going to talk a, a little bit more about later. And then there's, of course, right, movies and TV shows. I have just finished watching Star Wars Clone Wars. So good. Oh my gosh. So, so good. Um, and I know that when I'm feeling especially down or burnt out or just I had a really bad day, um, there's certain things that I find so comforting, like watching a Miyazaki movie. So that's like My Neighbor Totoro, uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, great movies to watch. Uh, I also find the game Stardew Valley very calming and meditative. So if you've never played that, I highly recommend it. 
And the last thing on my list here is organization. So organizing a closet, a space, my schedule, anything like that, I find to be quite a stress reliever and I always feel better afterwards. So that's my list and that there's there's the time you've had to brainstorm your own list so i will ask if anyone wants to share one two five things like whatever whatever you want to share from your own brainstormed list so again you can unmute uh, if you're feeling that way or you can type in the chat so one of my big ones is i love to sit on my porch and people watch um, I live in an urban area, so I can just watch all the people walk back and forth. Um, and I can still do that while social distancing. So that's, that's been fun. Awesome. I love that. Thanks for sharing. I kind of like going for walks and, and peering into people's houses, even though that seems really creepy and just seeing what people have going, going on. Um, one of my big ones that, you know, didn't, show up on on your list is listening to music um that's a big one for me just laying in the middle of my bed or on the floor and listening to really good bands um just it's almost meditative for me awesome great yeah for sure and yeah i don't know that's not on my list but definitely that helps i feel like i haven't done that recently but that's a good reminder i want to do that more I hadn't done it until last night, <laughs> which is why it's so fresh on my mind. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Anyone else want to share? Seeing on my thing here. Oh my gosh, I can't see everyone at the same time, so I'm trying to like see. Okay, cool. So you have your brainstormed list or mind map of self-care ideas. Uh, oh, someone shared being outside. So yard work, gardening, or just walking. Great. Awesome. Okay, so next I want to, I like organizing things. So this is going to make sense for me. So <laughs> let's talk about categories. So you don't have to look too in depth at these. Like don't look at all the small little words. Don't, don't worry about too, that too much. Um, so what might help you is looking at different categories of self-care or a wellness wheel. So these are two different kinds of wellness wheels here. Um, I do recommend looking at them to help you think of different areas of your life or different categories for self-care. So some parts may not work for you or you might visualize the categories differently. So I encourage you to develop your own self-care wheel as opposed to molding yourself into something that doesn't work with you. Okay, so on the next slide, I am going to share with you the categories that I've made for myself and two ways that I look at them. Okay, so you'll see I have created seven categories for myself, but you can use however many work for you and call them whatever makes sense to you. This is your thing, not anyone else's. So for me, the category of creativity would be any arts and crafts or working on new projects. Connection is time with family and friends. Movement is any physical activity, like some cardio or yoga or what have you. Intellectual for me is learning new things, reading, doing a crossword puzzle, uh, or even trying out escape rooms, which I have grown to really love. Uh, media is movies, TV shows, podcasts. Mindful for me is anything when I'm looking inward. So I'm doing that self-reflective uh, piece. So that might be journaling, meditation, time in nature, or organizing things. And finally, I have body, which to me is things like drinking enough water, the food that I eat, and you know, seeing a doctor when I don't feel well or you know, going to my regular checkups and, and things like that. So these are my categories here. Um, it, this can be helpful to see if you're concentrating on one area more than the other and to think about all aspects in a more rounded way. Uh, if it helps, you can also think of each category as a battery. So if you like the ones on the right hand side are my seven categories, but there it's more like how, how full that battery is for you, right? For, so for some things that might be like, I'm doing a little bit in this area, so I only fill it 25% or what have you. Or, hey, with uh, uh, media, I'm doing really well with that because uh, all I'm doing is 
being at home watching Netflix. So I'm doing really well in that area. That one's full for me. Okay, so uh, we have our brainstormed list. We have our categories now. Uh, and I encourage you to spend some time after because it took me a while to come up with these categories. So what you can do is look at your list and see which ones sort of go together. You can see where you know, you're doing really well and what areas you want to work on too. Okay, so you've got a list. Now let's make a plan of action. All right, so you have your lists, you have your categories. Now let's look at time frames. Okay, so think about what things you want to happen on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually. So daily might be things like drinking enough water. Weekly might be reading a couple of chapters out of a book. Monthly, maybe that's uh, seeing your closest friends for dinner. Quarterly might be going to a drop-in art class. And annually might be taking a vacation or a weekend getaway, right? So there's certain things you want to do in different time frames. Uh, the other thing I want to say is you can also have a to-try list. So um, that would be something you might want to add to your self-care plan that you haven't tried yet, right? So instead of saying, oh, this thing that I've never done before, I want to do this on a weekly basis, just say like, oh, I just want to try it and see if it works for me. See if it's something that I like, um, that I want to implement into my self-care plan. So an example of this that I can give uh, is meditation. So I have a very busy mind. I, I feel like my, my brain is just like this jumble of stuff sometimes, so much going on. So I never thought that meditation it would be something that I can get into because my mind is just so busy. It wasn't until I took an online workshop on mindfulness where they did some guided meditations with us and they taught us to observe thoughts as they come and go with curiosity instead of judgment. So I thought that was a really cool way to look, look at it. Um, and I did find it helpful in sort of quieting the mind and making me feel more aware of my thoughts and my emotions. Um, and again, it may not be for everyone and it's not something I would practice for say 30 minutes in a day. I think that's a bit too much, but you know, maybe that's something I wanted to do on a, a weekly basis to check in with myself. All right, so next let's look at your plan. So look at everything that you have so far and think about the things you are already doing well. So look at your list and I'd like you to put a star next to the ones you're doing really well or that you always make time for. Okay, so for me, I would star movies and TV shows, crossword puzzles, and organization. I know that I do those things all the time. Okay, all right, so next, I want you to think about the areas that you want to work on more or that you want to spend more time on and circle those things. So for me, I would circle meditation, reading, because I have not been reading as much as I normally would like to be. Uh, and I'm also going to circle spending time in nature. So circle the things that you want to work on more or that you want to spend more time on. Okay, so there's things that you've circled. Maybe there are just a couple of things. Maybe there's a million things that you have circled, right? I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. You're not going to work on all of them all at once. That would be too much. So what I'd like you to do is pick one to three priority areas. So sort of like the things you want to work on right away. Uh, and then give yourself a check-in date. And maybe that's one week from now, maybe that's a month from now, uh, and check in with yourself on that date to see if you did that thing or see how things went. And let's make sure when you're setting these goals or making these plans that they're realistic. So again, I want to emphasize that you know yourself best, right? So you know what you have on your plate, you know what's going on for you. So pick a priority and pick a time frame that works best for you. Um, 
pick only one if that's what's realistic and set a time frame that you think you'll actually be able to accomplish that thing. All right. Um, and when you get to that date, maybe you don't get anywhere with it. So don't be discouraged. Like that, that is okay. Things get in the way. As we've talked about before, life happens. So even just taking stock and spending the time to realize like, huh, I didn't do that thing, um, it can help you take the next step, right? So maybe you check in with yourself in a week and you say, okay, I didn't do that thing. How can I make it so that in this upcoming week or two weeks, I can make sure that thing gets done? Okay, so I want to encourage you to build self-care into how you plan your day. So think about how you do this. Do you bullet journal? Are you fully digital, built in reminders, points in your to-do list, make appointments in, in your calendar for the day that will help you integrate self-care into your day. So even with bullet journals, you can make your own tracking sheet for certain things. So if you wanna drink like X number of cups of water a day, you can make a tracking sheet for that. Or if you wanna read however many books in a year, you can make a tracking sheet for that. And it, some of them can be very artistic. You can Google them and see how fancy they are, but you don't need to be that fancy. It's whatever works for you. There's also, you know, like apps. Uh, I feel like I always come back to drinking water, but there's apps that remind you like, hey, drink water. Or uh, you can also add uh, extensions to your web browser that remind you to take a break after a certain amount of time. So if you're working, um, and you want to get up every half an hour, it will remind you and fill your whole screen and be like, hey, you need to take a break. So you go, you take your five minute break and then you come back and get back to work. So finding little tools and tricks that work for you are great. Okay, so, um, so with my goal, my goal that I've made is to meditate more. So I feel like I always talk about it and that I say to people, I like to do it. I'm just not doing it enough for myself. So my goal is to have one 10 minute meditation session for myself uh, before the end of day next Saturday. So that is my priority right now. And I've given myself a time frame. So by next Saturday, I want to have done it for 10 minutes. So does anyone want to share their goal or their thoughts or anything? Again, you can unmute or you can write in the chat if you'd like, whatever you want to do. And you don't have to share if you don't want to because, you know, it's a, it's a personal thing as well. Oh, I want to write one short piece within the next week. Yeah, awesome. Okay. I would like to take my dogs on weekly walks. Awesome. Cool, I like that. Uh, there's a lot of free theater art on oh, I missed it. There's a lot of free theater art online right now, so I try to watch one thing a day. Awesome. And I want to meditate at least a couple of times a week. I always benefit from it when I remember to. Yeah, that's why you gotta build in those reminders or write it on paper. I go both. I'm digital and paper. I can't walk away from the paper. I love it too much. Awesome, thank you for sharing everyone. Okay, so now we have our own list of self-care ideas. We have some categories. Oh, and another thing we have, I wanna do more arts and crafts with my daughter, awesome. So you have both the creativity going on and then the time with family, which is super important as well. I love that, thank you for sharing. Okay, we've got our list, we've got categories and we've made at least one goal for ourselves. So I want to remind you to feel free to revisit your notes anytime and rearrange things as you see fit. Um, and you can take it from here. You, again, have everything that you need to practice self-care. All right, so now I want to go into some extra tips and resources for self-care, okay? Uh, the first thing I want to share with you is journaling. So I have personally found journaling to be very helpful for self-reflection. If you want to try journaling, but you get stuck when, you look, when you're looking at a blank page, uh, prompts might be helpful for you, right? And I get that. Like, I, I think I'm pretty good at journaling, but sometimes I just, I don't know what to write. 
and even that um, you know, advice to just write whatever comes to mind isn't always helpful. Right, so I have created um, 30 journaling prompts for everyone and I'm gonna put this in the chat. Okay, so yeah, I've put a link in the chat. So this is to a, a Google Drive share folder that has the journaling prompts. I made them look all pretty <laughs> for you. Um, it also has a copy of the slides if you want to review anything. Uh, and I've also included some coloring pages, which I'm going to talk about next. So coloring is like, it's kind of a big thing now, or it has been for the last couple of years. These are three of the coloring books that I currently have. Um, they're great. So I've got Wonder Woman, Harry Potter, and then one called Women of Power. The Women of Power one I actually got for free at Geek Girl Con uh, last year, which is pretty amazing. It has just a ton of um, female superheroes in it. So it's really great. Um, and there's so many options out there, like whatever you like, if you want to color like gardening things or, or what have you, like there is stuff out there for you if you want to color. Uh, you can also print them off online. So I included three that I thought were pretty good if you wanted to start it, start out and just print them out. Um, all you need is I don't know, pencil crayons, or markers, whatever you have at home. So I find coloring to be soothing and meditative and a great way to do something artistic without worrying out, like how to draw or like how to do something fancy. All you have to do is pick a color and just go for it. All right, and the next tip I have for you is practicing gratitude. So practicing gratitude helps us see the positives in life because we're, you know, we're programmed as human beings to spend more of our time, our energy and our thoughts on the negative. And so like giving a presentation, for example, right? So let's say you have to give this big work presentation we tend to focus on any little errors or things that we think went wrong rather than thinking about the things that went right, okay? And it's not to say we shouldn't learn from those things and grow from those things. So we should take in that information but not dwell on it where it's a detriment to our own uh, well-being. So seeing the positives in the day and taking a moment to feel gratitude can help us find that balance between the negative and the positive. So when you're practicing gratitude, um, what I like to do is list one to three things each day. Um, and you can do this either before you go to bed or the first thing when you wake up, whatever works for you. And don't overthink it. Literally write whatever comes to mind. Um, I've been doing this for the last few months and I find it really helpful uh, to find that balance, especially when I'm feeling subpar or having a bad day. So today, uh, I'm grateful for community, for creative ideas, and the character of Asaka Tano from Clone Wars, because she's an awesome character. All right. And here's our summary. Okay, so let's summarize what we have gone through today. So you already have what you need to practice self-care. You don't need to make drastic changes in your life, nor do you have to go buy any expensive items. Use the tools and ideas that work for you. So you know yourself best, so adapt everything to work for you, your personality, and your lifestyle. Self-care is an everyday practice. It includes the big and the little things. It's paying attention to what you need in each and every moment. Self-care is not selfish. This is the key here. We need to move beyond the badge of busy and prioritizing everyone else over ourselves. And remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. Self-care is good for us and those around us. It's good for our mental health and allows us to show up for others a lot better. And we're now walking away with a brainstorm of self-care ideas, some categories to think about, and we've made a self-care plan or goal to turn these ideas into action. So that is our day today. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for uh, participating in this workshop. And I definitely have time to answer questions if people have them. 
Uh, but first, I want to say a couple of things. So first, I would love it if you could complete a feedback survey. So I'm also going to just pop that in the chat right now. Right. So it's just a Google form, super easy and simple to open and fill out. I would really appreciate any and all feedback that you can give me. It'll only take a couple of minutes. I've also included my contact information here. Uh, I love connecting with people. So if you like want to find me on Instagram, send me an email, just go for it. Uh, my Instagram handle is at nest underscore Gale. And then my email is staytrueworkshops at gmail.com. I hope to do a lot more workshops in the future um, around the topic of you know, self-care and maybe self-esteem and confidence and things like that. Yeah, uh, let's see, question here. Will you be, I catch all of that. Will you be sharing this recording? Yeah, I think it'll be on, on YouTube. Yep, we're gonna put it on the Superheroines Etc. YouTube channel. Um, you can subscribe there, or I'll also be popping it into the event information on Facebook, um, so you'll be able to access it. It does take about half an hour to process, so it'll probably be up later this afternoon. Awesome. Great question. Okay. Yeah. So again, there's my contact information. If you want to get in touch with me to discuss more or what have you or exchange ideas, I'm very open to do that. So thank you so much for attending and opening it, opening it up. I know you've been uh, a quiet group, but if anyone has questions, uh, feel free to unmute or again, type, type in the chat. I know it takes a little while for it to come through. Oh, you're welcome. Awesome. Cool. Whenever I wait for people to answer, I feel like I should play the like the Jeopardy music. Awesome. Okay. I love it. Really useful info. Hope to start practicing ASAP. Great. Awesome. Great. I'm super all about self-care and making people not making people encouraging people to practice it so really happy that uh this has been helpful oh so, yeah awesome if you're going see ya uh appreciate the focus on little everyday things for sure that's what it is it's not just not just the big things it's the little things for sure awesome well, thank you so much, Vanessa. Um, like I said, this will be up on our YouTube channel. Um, you can subscribe there. Again, you can follow Superheroines on all the different social media channels. Um, you can subscribe to our email list. Um, usually I drop in the videos um, from some of these to like sprinkle in throughout our email newsletter. So it may pop up in the near future too. Um, if you have any questions about Superheroines, et cetera, you can also ask those in the chat or um, unmute yourself. So we're not the only ones talking. <laughs> All right. Well, I think this is probably a good time to wrap up. Sounds good. Thank you again, everyone. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great day.